Hello there crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Owl YouTube channel and today I am back to share with you two more alternatives for the May 2019 paper pumpkin. I hope you'll stick around and find out what I'm going to create. So a couple days I shared a video with you where I created these two cards as alternatives for the latest paper pumpkin kit. For these cards I mainly used items from the kit that were just leftovers and some that were actually scraps that were headed for the recycling bin. If you want to watch this video I will link my playlist at the end or you can click on the link in the description box. For today's video, I am mainly going to be using stamps from the kit to create my very first try at a floating frame card, or you may know it as the press and seal technique. So the stamps I have pulled from the Paper Pumpkin Kit are the Feather, the Grateful and Hello stamps, and then For You and Dear Friend. Using this technique, I will actually end up with two cards for this video. If you want to see a really up close and personal really detailed tutorial. I originally saw this on Jennifer McGuire's channel and I will link her video below. She goes through and explains it very well. I'll just kind of touch on the basics in my video. Now if you do have any questions make sure to leave those in the comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's go ahead and take a look at some other supplies I'll be using. So in addition to the stamps from the paper pumpkin kit I will be using Versamark ink and then I will be doing some heat embossing with Recollections White Detail Embossing Powder. To color my images in, I just picked out three of my colored pencils, and then later I will pull out my Gamsol and my blending stump when I get ready to do that. Normally for this technique, people use rectangle dies, but I don't really have any that fit well on cards, and I want to use what I have, so I got out my BB Craft Stitch Nested Square Dies to use for today. So I will also be using, I have two craft colored card bases and then a piece of white that is four and a quarter by five and a half. Oops, I almost forgot. I will of course be using Press and Seal as well. You can't do the Press and Seal technique without the Press and Seal. Or at least I don't know how to do it yet. Maybe you do. Let me know below if there's a video out there. So if I bring in any other products or tools, I'll try to let you know. But again, always leave any questions below. So to get started, I am going to actually pull out some more craft cardstock and I'm going to start stamping my feather on that. I'm going to do about 20 feathers and I'm hoping that will cover the front. When I start my stamping, I'm going to stop and put my embossing powder on probably about every five feathers. That way the ink doesn't get too dry to stick to the embossing powder. And then at the end, I will use my heat gun on all of them at one time. All of my feathers are stamped, so I'm going to go ahead and get out my heat gun and turn the embossing powder into the final product, the final kind of enamel. And I don't know about you, but I don't know if there's anything more satisfying than when this powder turns completely white. Well, here's an example of best laid plans. I really thought I had got out my detail white embossing powder, but I actually pulled out my detail clear. You know what? We are going to go with it. This is just an example of making it work. Now that I have melted all of my embossing powder, my clear embossing powder, I'm going to go ahead and color these in with my colored pencils. I chose three colors to use. I just thought these would look nice against the craft. And what I'm going to do is color six to seven 
with each of the three colors and I'm only going to color the larger parts of the feather, the more open spaces. All of my feathers are now colored. So what I'm gonna do is just go in quickly using my odorless mineral spirits with my blending stump and just kind of blend out the pencil lines and this will help me get in those tight spots that I couldn't reach with the tip of the pencil. All of the colors have now been blended out, so I will be cutting each of these out individually. I am gonna leave a slight craft border around the edge. And down here where the feather is real fine and wispy, I'm just gonna kinda cut that off. I'll show you here in just a second a finished one. This is one of those times where I wish Paper Pumpkin would let you buy dies to go with the stamps in their kit because for something like this, it would definitely be worth it. Now it is time to figure out how I want my feathers to lay on my piece of white paper. This will not end up being on the card at the end. This is just so I get an idea of placement on the card front. Now the next part is I need to get out a piece of press and seal and without moving my feathers too much, I'm gonna press it flat down onto here. I'm gonna cut off this top part first so I can take some of the scraps and fill in that blank area. Now I can go ahead and remove my feathers from the white cardstock. So I'm just carefully going to peel this back, making sure that my hand cut feathers come with the press and seal and don't stay down on the cardstock. I'm gonna pull in my dimensionals now and I'm gonna go in and put pieces on the back of all the pieces that are on the press and seal. Now these very tiny slivers here on the side, I will not end up putting on the card.
Now that I have the dimensionals on the back of my feathers, it is time to get these put onto the card base. I thought I already had the camera running when I did this first one, so I will go ahead and show you how I'm going to do the larger one, and then I will peel the press and seal back from both of these so you can see what the card looks like so far. Because the adhesive on the dimensionals is stronger than the adhesive on the press and seal, when I go to remove the press and seal from this, it should just pull right off. Isn't that such a fun effect? And now from that one panel of feathers I've made, I have two cards ready for decoration and sentiment. The next step in the process is going to be to make my sentiments for each of the cards. So I went ahead and I got out my sentiment stamps from the May kit. I pulled out my Stampin' Up! triple banner punch. I will be using those square nesting stitch dies from BB Craft again. I'll be using Versamark with the clear embossing powder for my sentiments just to kind of stick with the look of the feathers. And then I pulled out a couple scraps of craft and then a yellow that I thought went well with the yellow on the feathers. For this card, I am going to use the Grateful and For You stamps. And what I'll do is I'll get this stamped and heat embossed and then I will use one of those square dies to cut out the sentiment and to cut out a mat on the yellow cardstock. Before I heat emboss it, I'm gonna go ahead and do the second sentiment, which will go on this card, and I will be using Hello and Dear Friend. For my hello dear friend, I'm just gonna cut it in a long strip, trying to get an even border above and below the letters. Got out a piece of my scotch removable tape to hold my die in place for the grateful for you. Because the frame on this card is popped up, I am just going to adhere this straight to the card front. I'm not going to use dimensionals on this like I probably normally would and just center it in that square opening. And there is card number one ready to go. For the second card, what I want to do is make a little banner or a little fishtail banner out of this. So I will be using my triple banner punch, which puts the fishtail in the ends of one, one and a half, and two inch strips of paper. To help the Hello Dear Friend sentiment stand out a little bit from the background of this card, I'm gonna cut a one and a quarter inch wide strip and adhere it behind this, just to help that stand out.
I hope you enjoyed that video of me creating two alternatives for the May 2019 paper pumpkin kit. If you did, as always, I appreciate a thumbs up. If you are new to my channel and would like to know when I post other card making videos, including more alternatives for this kit, I hope you'll hit the subscribe button and click on that bell so you'll be the first to know. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye.